Hello and welcome to a new video about programming Arduinos. This time we're going to talk about... We want to use an interrupt. And we want to use the interrupt. Now that we know what an interrupt is, we know that this reading out the encoder, this would be perfect, yeah? Because an interrupt, we are waiting for a change. Okay? We're waiting for a change on the pin and this change shall trigger if we are rotating counterclockwise or clockwise. This is a perfect opportunity for an interrupt service routine. Okay, so the hardware setup will stay the same. This is, this is not the issue. So the hardware setup will stay the same and we have to change our program. I will save this under new name. I will base it on the old program. I will call it 26 interrupt. Okay, so actually what we want to do yeah, is we do not want to read this in here, this pin A and compare, com, compare this and so on, this old pin A, I don't need it. Yeah? I just want to react on, on those turned clockwise and turned counterclockwise. Therefore, I will make those... Yeah, global variables, okay? So right now, this would do nothing, right? Because, okay, the reset, reset is this still the same. If I turn clockwise, value is plus. If we turn counterclockwise, value is minus. However, this turn clockwise and turn counterclockwise, they are never written. Huh? They are nowhere written. And here, I will make also the following. Whenever it was true, this turned clockwise, yeah, I will set it to false. Okay. And also here, whenever the counterclockwise was true and it was processed, I will also set it to false. Yeah. So this actually now nothing is nothing is happening yeah? because we read okay, I can press the button, then it's zero. But we're not reacting on turning. This is also check the compiler. The compiler says, hey, this is this this can never be met. Yeah? So we have to define here this with the keyword volatile. Then the compiler knows, okay, it's volatile. So this one variable might be written somewhere else. I don't care. I do not check if this is ever if this is ever possible or not. Yeah? So this is more of a compiler thing. Yeah? Then we are writing an internet in internet <laughs> interrupt service routine. Yeah? So I will call it check encoder. Okay. What do we want to do in this check encoder? Well, actually, what we want to do in this check encoder is we have to check if we if our last input turned clockwise or turned counterclockwise was already processed by our main program. All right. So in the in the interrupt service routine, I just want to set turned clockwise or turn, turned counterclockwise. Like we said, internet, interrupt service routine shall be very short and precise and not too much, not too much thing is. Yeah? So I will first check if this if this counterclockwise is false and also the clockwise or the clockwise is false or and also the counterclockwise is false and only then we know because here we set it false the main program has already processed this information yeah? and now I will just compare I will teach you the read pin A I will teach the read pin B, yeah? so pretty much at the same time. And if those two are equal, yeah? then we know we are turning counterclockwise. Else. Oh, this was the wrong type of bracket. Else, we are turning clockwise. 
Okay. This is the internet interrupt service routine. Just check if the inputs are the same, and if the inputs are the same, write it. All right. So the only thing we, which is left is we have to attach the interrupt to this uh, pin number two. Let's call it pin number two, pin number A. And uh, whenever pin A is changing, we want to trigger the uh, internet interrupt service routine. So we will write attach interrupt. Okay. Now we will call encoder. Yeah. We will call it whenever the pin is changing. And here we said we cannot just use pin A. This would look very logical, but it's not the case. We have to use the internet number, interrupt number. And the interrupt number is attached to a certain pin. Either we write the interrupt number if we know it from the top of our head, yeah, or we could use a digital pin uh, to interrupt. This function is now returning the interrupt of this pin number. All right? So this should already this should already work. Yeah? Now we should work with an interrupt. Let's see. Let's upload this. Reading from rotor encoder. Turn. Aha. Okay. So there is still some somewhere the wrong the wrong direction, okay? So even if you're working with the interrupt, it's somewhere in the wrong direction. So this means some, maybe this digital read of pin A comes a little bit too soon. Yeah, so I will use delay, delay, attention. Delay is not working in an internet interrupt service routine. Yeah, however, what is working is delay micro seconds okay here we here we're not giving uh milliseconds we're giving microseconds and i will wait let's say half a millisecond before i do this compare let's see if this is working better Looks better a little bit. No, it looks much better. Yeah. Maybe sometimes I have an issue. Oh. Let's wait a little bit longer. Let's see. Oof. Let's wait one microsecond. Yeah. Let's wait one microsecond. Yeah, I think we can be satisfied. It now really, only if this is probably me, what I'm doing here. Yeah. Working much better. Use an interrupt. You see, this really improves our task. And now, yeah, now the main program doesn't have the running time of the main program doesn't have influence here yeah? because with the inter interrupt we will interrupt whatever program is currently running and we will react on on this change okay so this is actually nice huh? this is how interrupt is working you could try for instance to to change to change this uh, the value yeah? and use the value to control the brightness of LED, let's call it. Yeah? So let's we only have to take care that the value is not changing below zero and above 255, and then you can already set the brightness. 
Maybe you can even use then the button to turn the LED on and off with the last known brightness. So this would be actually quite nice, I would say. Yeah, yeah this, this is one thing you could do. Yeah. This is the encoder. Okay, so this is the encoder. Uh, next time we're talking about a motor again. Okay, we had now this input device. Next time we're talking about a so called servo motor. A servo motor can be used for positioning. Yeah. How a servo motor is working and what it is used for, we will hear next video. And then we are going to use our encoder to position the server motor. Okay? For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.